In this video, I am going to try and provide you with a couple of ideas that might be helpful for anyone who has a damaged floor joist that might be under a non-load-bearing wall or even a load-bearing wall where you have a situation where there might be a couple of floors above you. And I would also like to point out that something like this might not be considered to be your average do-it-yourselfer job. And keep in mind that these are only suggestions and they might not work on your particular project. So the damaged joist that we are going to be referring to is underneath this non-load bearing wall and the reason why we know that it is a non-load bearing wall is that the joists are running parallel to it. However, I am going to provide you with an example of what you can do if this was a load bearing wall and the joists were sitting on top of it or running perpendicular to it and not parallel like we have here. So let's go ahead and start with my first suggestion if you would need to transfer the load and that would be to transfer the load to the other joists that are on the other side. And you can do that by using large blocks and maybe some 4x4 posts and then make sure that the posts are over the joist and that they are underneath the joist above. And keep in mind that this is only an example of something you might need to use if there's a lot of weight above. For example, you might have a water bed above this that would require some extra structural support. So here we have a support post underneath the joist and here we have it underneath the drywall. And of course, this is just to provide you with an example of something you can use if you don't want to remove the drywall. But in some cases you will need to remove the drywall and even the drywall on the interior walls. In our next example I will show you how you can transfer the weight to the joist from underneath the wall here by using a small beam that will sit on top of the support post. And then of course you can always add some filler pieces in here so that you can support the joist on each side of it along with the load bearing wall or at least this portion of the load bearing wall. And even though I only have one in here and then this one over here, you might need to put quite a few of these supports in depending upon how much weight it would be carrying above. So again, this will provide you with a method for transferring the load down to the building foundation by using some posts in between the floors. So if we had a four-story building, you would just simply stack these babies up to transfer the load down to the building foundation. And of course, you could sit it on top of the foundation or on top of a block, or you could have it sitting on a flat two by six or two by four, whatever you feel comfortable with, just as long as it isn't going to move. And I would make sure that all of these components are attached firmly to the floor joist, because the last thing you want to have doing is to have some type of a movement. For example, if the floor was to lift up a little bit and take the weight off of the post, these things could just fall over. And if you're the one standing there in the way and you get clobbered with one of them, you're not going to feel too good. So again, we can see here where it's transferring the load all the way up. And of course, this is going to allow us to remove this joist. Next up, let's go ahead and remove some of this stuff. You won't be removing it, but I'm going to remove it to make my illustrations a little cleaner. And then we can go ahead and remove our joist. Now for something like this, you might be able to put a joist in and slide it over a beam or a wall and then slide it in the opposite direction to where it'll fit over the wall framing or a beam. But that might require a smaller joist. For example, if you have a 11 and a half inch joist, you might need to cut it down to 11 inches. Or if you have a large sag in the floor, you're not going to be able to do that. That's not going to be easy to do, which is going to lead me to my next example. And that would be to use a joist that's going to be a little bit smaller. Now with this joist here, if you did have a 
sag in the floor, you could always take the joist and lower it a little bit or lower it enough to where you can slide it into the section over the wall or over the beam on the other side. And then you won't have to worry about it sliding in this direction or moving at all because you'll be able to raise it up with a jack into place. And this method right here is a lifesaver for anyone who isn't familiar with it. But again, I need to point out that this might be a method that you won't be able to use for your project. Or it might require some type of structural engineering approval. So to make this method work, we're simply going to install some large blocks here that are going to sit on top of the load-bearing beam and then raise our joist into position so that we can install a joist hanger like this that will support the weight and transfer it down to the beam or wall accordingly. Something else you might need to consider will be to install a larger beam with a larger hanger. And often something like this might be the case because you've got to stop and ask yourself, why is the joist damaged? Is it actually undersized? And if you do install a larger beam, you might need to do some modifications to the other side to make it fit over the wall framing plate or beam. So again, these are things you're going to need to think about. Next up, let's take a look at what I would consider to be the easiest repair for most do-it-yourselfers, and that would be to install a wall underneath the damaged joist. And something like this might allow you to take the sag out of the floor a little easier because you're going to be able to use jacks and posts to raise everything into position before installing the wall framing studs. And of course, you could always install another joist next to this one before you nail the framing plates underneath the joist so that you can get a little more structural support. And that's about all I have for this video. If you have any questions or something I might have missed, feel free to leave it in the comment area. And don't forget to hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed watching the video or actually learned something useful from it.